Okay, let's talk about the MCAS exam or the MCAS. And that stands for the Massachusetts Comprehensive Assessment System. So if you're finishing up high school in the state of Massachusetts, you're likely going to have to take the MCAS. Uh, I don't know the exact specifics in terms of the policies uh, in it, but uh, it's definitely a you know um, a, an exam that you are going to be taking at uh, in terms of completing high school. So a lot of uh, states, every state out there has something similar to it, whether it be uh, you know California, Florida, Texas. They all have uh, similar exams where you know you have to take some sort of standardized uh, test to verify what you learned in high school. So for the state of Massachusetts, the MCAS would be the exam that you're going to be taking. So if you're watching this video, clearly, you know, you're taking this seriously, okay, as you should be, because any uh, big test uh, that you have to take in your life, and this would be one of them, you want to put in, you know, the effort um, and do the best you possibly can on the test. So what we're going to be doing here is uh, take a look at a math practice problem, something hopefully you should be able to handle uh, because it's going to be uh, covering the level of math that you studied while you were in high school. Okay, so hopefully you can do this pretty easily. We'll get to this problem here in a second. Uh, but first, let me introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher and been teaching many, many years. And I've constructed a lot of online math courses to include an MCAS math prep course. So I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video. That's something you can uh, check out if you like. But let's get to um, this problem. Okay, so this is just a basic kind of math problem. Okay, you covered uh, things like this. You may not remember exactly. Um, but what I'd like you to do is to think about uh, this problem. First of all, let me actually tell you what I'd like you to do. Okay, I want you to simplify. Okay, I want you to add these two things up and write it in its most simplest manner, okay? So uh, there is some things to uh, you can do here. Um, now, if you already know what to do or what you think you can do, and by the way, do not use a calculator, okay? I don't want you to go in and actually get some decimals and add these up. That's not the idea here, all right? We're talking about working with square roots and simplifying them. So that's kind of my first hint to you, okay? So... Um, if you don't want to hear any more hints, go ahead and pause the video and do the problem. But I'm going to give you a hint, and then, of course, I'm going to solve the problem. All right, so when we have uh, square roots, or what we call radicals, there's various properties of radicals. We can uh, simplify uh, radicals. For example, if I have the square root of 4, the square root of 4 is what? Okay, this is a little pop quiz. Be careful on the answer you give me, okay? All right, I guarantee you probably 90% of you, maybe 95% said the square root of 4 is 2. Now, if you said that, that's very good, okay? So instead of a full smiley face, I will give you a neutral face, okay? Because here, this is half correct, right? The square root of 4 is plus or minus 2, okay? So 2 times 2... Okay, when you take the same number and you multiply it by itself, 2 times 2, positive 2, you're going to get a uh, positive 4. And a negative 2 times a negative 2 is also a positive 4. So if you just said 2 and you forgot the negative 2, you know, that's, you, you got to be careful there, right? But that's, again, most students are just going to uh, impulsively or quickly say, oh, that's just 2. No, you really want to think about things. So these are all the little details or all the little uh, concepts that, you know, most students kind of forget about or tend to go too slow. So anyways, uh, if you did answer this as plus or minus two, you definitely earned yourself a smiley face. Okay, so anyways, again, I can write the square root of four as plus or minus two, okay? So basically, uh, a simpler way to write the square root of four would be plus or minus two. Now, for the purposes of this problem, we're just going to use the positive version. I know that's kind of backtracking on my uh, little illustration here. We'll just use the positive uh, version of the answer, okay, for what I'm going to be uh, showing you here. All right, so uh, 
Now, another kind of way to think about uh, simplifying expressions is if I said uh, we have 5 over 10, a fraction 5 over 10, or let's say 50 over 100, would I want to write 50 over 100? No, I would want to write the fraction 1 half. So when we're talking about reducing fractions or simplifying expressions, you know, there's ways that we can write things simpler. So when we're uh, working with radicals or square roots, you want to use the properties of uh, square roots or properties of radicals to write things as simply or as uh, simple as possible. Okay, so let's get to it. And uh, let's start with the square root of 20. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and write this over here. So the square root, of, let's do it over here, square root of 20. So one of the things you need to know uh, when you're dealing with square roots is that we could take the square roots of the uh, factors underneath uh, the, whatever that number is. Let me just go ahead and illustrate that to you. So we know the square root of 20 is the same thing as the square root of 4 times 5, because 4 times 5 is, in fact, 20, right? So 4 times 5. But we have a nice property when we're talking about uh, square roots is we can kind of rip this apart. We can write this as a square root of 4 times the square root of 5. This is the same thing as a square root of 4 times 5. So you need to know that uh, property. And this, of course, is the same thing as a square root of 20. But by doing that, I can simplify this expression. So now I can say, oh, I get the square root of 4, and we know that that's plus or minus 2. So you can write this as plus or minus 2 square root of 5, but we'll just go ahead and write it as 2 square root of 5 for the purposes of this problem. Okay, so the square root of 20, you would want to simplify it and write it as 2 square root of 5. So let's go ahead and do that now. 2 square root of 5. Now we're going to add that to the square root of 45. Now... Here, let's take a look at the square root of 45, and let's uh, follow the same idea. Let's actually do it over here. And if you kind of got the, uh, the, you know, if you remember this from your math classes, let's go ahead and do the same thing with the square root of 45 over here, all right? So the square root of 45, let's think of some factors of 45, okay? Some things that can... can um, and we could break this up into. So how about the square root of 9 times 5? 9 times 5 is 45. Now, it's really convenient that we have a 9 here, that this is 9 times 5, and that's 45. And this was a four, this was 4 times 5, which is uh, uh, 20, because we were able to take the square root of these numbers. Like numbers you could take the square root of it very nicely, right? So what are those called? These are called perfect squares. So things like 4, uh, 9, what would be the next one? Like 16, right? 25, etc. So you want to look for factors that are perfect square type factors. So a square root of uh, uh, 45, if we can factor it as a square root of 9 times 5, they, it's a real advantage because I can write this as the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. And now I can do what I did uh, over with the square root of 20. I can write this as the square root of 45 is equal to 3 square root of 5. Okay, because the square root of 9 is 3. And we know it's positive and negative 3. We'll write it as positive. Um, positive 3, but positive 3 times the square root of 5. So let's go ahead and write that here. Okay, so at this point, we, we're almost done, okay? The next thing you hopefully uh, want to understand about working with square roots is that if you have the same exact radical, in other words, the square root of 5 and the square root of 5, this is almost like having, or exactly like having like terms in algebra. So in other words, if you have the same variable, let's say I had 2x plus 3x, I would write this as what? 5x, okay? So looking here, I have two square roots of 5, and here I have three square roots of 5, so in total I have five square roots of 5. So that would be my final answer. Okay, so uh, for those of you out there that were able to take this and get this, that's uh, pretty good, okay? So we'll definitely give you uh, a full-on thumbs up, okay? Uh, again, you know, this is a basic 
uh, level high school mathematics, all right? Stuff that you would learn in algebra. Now, you cover a lot of stuff in high school mathematics, but this is one of the more foundational kind of concepts. So if you got it right, that's, you know, uh, you know I would say pretty impressive that, you know, you're, you remember uh, this. Of course, uh, there's a lot of other mathematics that uh, could be covered on the MCAS, okay? A lot of algebra, geometry, et cetera. So by no means is this, you know, an indication that you're fully ready for the MCAS math uh, section, okay? If you didn't get it right, don't panic. Use it as feedback, you know, uh, and guidance to, you know, um, put in some more effort to study. Obviously, by virtue virtue of you watching this video, you are taking this exam seriously. All right, so let's go and wrap up this video. Uh, with all these kind of videos that I make um, for a particular test, uh, especially a high school level test, um, I always stress, you know, as a teacher myself, Always go and take full advantage of your teacher, your school. Uh, start there, okay? That you don't want to be looking for solutions outside of your, you know, working with your teacher, or your school. So take full advantage, listen to your teacher, ask questions, etc. But if you need a good supplemental program, you know, outside of that, then something like my MCAS Math Prep course. Uh, is going to be highly beneficial. All my courses have taken me years to build. I'm very proud of them. They're very, very effective and comprehensive. So again, I'm going to leave the link to that uh, in the description of this video. So something, and you also want to be very careful uh, that you don't have so many different study materials. You know, again, start with your teacher, get the guidance from your school and your teacher first, take full advantage of all that, and then be very selective on uh, the other things that you're studying from because sometimes you can just get overwhelmed and be studying from too many things and uh, that's that can cause other problems um, if you're new to my youtube channel been on youtube for a good 12 years i literally have hundreds of videos on my uh, channel that can help you out on the mcas math section uh, and i'm posting stuff all the time so hopefully you consider subscribing uh, if you enjoyed the video definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback um, What's your plans after high school? Are you going off to college? Probably a lot of you are. Are you going to go to some particular uh, training school, vocational school? That's a good option. Maybe you're going in the military. Whatever the case is, you know, uh, going to college isn't the only path, you know, to be happy and successful in life. Okay. So whether it's going off to a trade school, maybe you're just going to start by going into the workforce. All of these paths you can do well in life. But the one thing that you're going to need no matter what path you take, is going to be hard work, commitment, and, um, you know, dedication, right? So right now you want to be investing in yourself. So by studying what you have to study, you know, finishing up high school, uh, get those basic skills down, math, reading, writing, all that is critical, all right? And hopefully this uh, little video was, you know, a good reminder for all of that. But with that being said, no matter what your course is after high school, I definitely wish you all the best. And uh, thank you for your time and have a great day.